Hey everyone, Andrew Summers here with a video on my IFV, or my CVM3 that is. Now some background on this vehicle, uh, the, the CVM3, that's a completely fictional name, there is no such vehicle as that. Um, actually I call it that because it's a little bit of the, uh, the CV90, the Swedish CV90, uh, and I like the M3 Bradley moniker, so I've called it the CVM3. Now, as you can see, it is a tracked infantry fighting vehicle. So, yes, of course, it has tracks. Uh, tracks by Brickmania, I should add. They do some really good work with track links. So, if you're not aware of who they are or what they do, uh, look up Brickmania. You can see they got tread links for sale and a lot, of, a lot of other cool stuff. Not a plug by them or anything, but, you know, just what the hell. As I'm talking about some product of theirs, I might as well go on about that. Anyhow, some of the things on this feature, on this model, I should say, uh, the turret, yeah, the turret does a full 360 degrees, so you can spin it around, like so, right? The cannon on this thing, it also elevates and depresses just a little bit, so I can lift it up like that, I can drop it back down like that. It's a fairly fragile mechanism, I know that's kind of like a... A repeating story on a lot of my models that something is fragile but uh, yeah it's it's fragile but it does sort of work um, other points of interest on the turret you can see that there is a tow launcher right here so that tow launcher you can fire missiles if your uh, if your main cannon isn't really you know doing the trick because <laughs> sometimes it doesn't now uh, what else? Oh yeah, and then there's also a remote weapon station on it. Because, you know, you can have a remote weapon station, keep the crew safe and all. So that's just a brick arms weapon that has a little mounting on it, which you've seen it used before on my builds. It's not a, not a new design or anything. But it does sit on a nice little outcropping here. Uh, other things about the turret. Oh yeah, one thing I really like about the turret is how the shaping just came all together. Now I've talked about this before, I believe in my IFV, or my wheeled IFV I think. It was two weeks ago? Yeah, video two weeks ago. Um, how the shaping just sort of comes together so nicely, and this is kind of one of those instances as well where it does come nicely together. So you can see I got some sloping here on the sides, kind of flat, but then it moves into one of these plates here, these uh, wedge plates. And then from there, I've just used a hinge brick, you know, a one by two hinge brick, just to angle these other pieces. So you get a one by two little curved slope here. And then right in here, you can see that there is a, a coaxial machine gun right there. That's mounted right next to the main gun. And it, again, it just kind of fell together so nicely. <laughs> you know, and same sort of situation with this side over here. You know, just the, the plating for the armor, the sloping, and everything there. And then, of course, you know, we got to say hi to the minifigure here. So the minifigure, you know, the, the turret actually seats two people. Uh, if you're questioning how many this thing seats in total, well, that would be one, two, three, plus six dismounts. That would be nine people in total. I'll open up the interior in a little bit so you can, so you can see that I'm not fibbing on that one. <laughs> Now, other little features, there is an opening driver's hatch and an opening engine compartment. From past experience, the engine compartment is a pain in the arse to open, so let's just open up the driver's hatch. So you can see the driver's hatch in here. Got the driver. He's got a fairly nice little seating position right here, so not too cramped, just the perfect amount of space. And right over here, the vented black tiles, this is where the engine is at. Yeah, that's not going anywhere, but trust me, there is an engine in there. I don't know why that's such a pain to open. Maybe I should fix that on the next version, which is inevitable. <laughs> so the ass end of the vehicle here. You have a rear hatch, of course. This hatch folds down. And you can sort of see the seating inside here. Um, well, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about the seating, uh, the seating mechanism I used <laughs> when I open up the vehicle. 
but still into the exterior stuff. You got an antenna to the left. You got like a, I don't know, some sensor sort of thing right here to the right. Uh, let's zoom in on that. Yeah, it's it's made out of a screwdriver. I don't know what you'd call that. A lever base and then a, I don't know, part after that and then a lightsaber hilt. But then just some more detail. Now, detail is always kind of nice. Detail including uh, dust flaps. You know, I, I know that when I first posted this vehicle, it was a different version of it quite a while back. The dust flaps, 50-50. People liked it, either they liked it or they didn't. I like it. Um, I don't know, they're kind of, they're kind of a nod to the British, uh, I believe it's the Ascod. It's a, an IFV, a fairly new IFV from Britain. And some versions of it have that, and I quite like it. So, let's go to the interior now, shall we? And to do so, well, that's pretty simple. For one, you just pop the turret right off. You know, and if we're starting with the interior, we might as well go... Uh, might as well go with the interior of the turret. So the turret, as I said, it pops off very, very easily. Now, in a lot of previous versions of models I've done, the turret has always been anchored using like a, a you know, a couple studs or whatever. This design and on some of my others, I've done away with that anchored design. It's just kind of like a free-floating turret. Um, that makes it easier to just pop the turret off, fit the guys in, whatever. So you can see inside here, the seating uh, uses these panel pieces, the 1x2x2 two two panels. And actually that's the way the seating is for the, uh, the dismounts, you know, the infantry that fit in the back here. Which we'll get to, I promise. <laughs> Just hold on. But yeah, the, uh, there's a little bit of detail on the turret itself here inside. So you can see, or at least that you can see, yeah, there we go. A little computer system, like green cheese slope to represent like a com another computer or viewfinder or whatever. Uh, and as we're talking about the turret, I'll mention the top of it as well. It's like an active protection system unit there. Then there's smoke launchers. And then you got a combat identification panel on the back and a spare road wheel. Well, that's enough of that. Now let's go to the actual interior of the vehicle, shall we? And to get to the interior of the vehicle, you just got to remove a few things. Pop these two off here and here. That just falls out on its own. And then you just open up the hatches here and here. Now, here is the interior of the vehicle. I know you can see a lot of light. That's just sort of, you know, the pieces not fitting together all the way. But... From here, you can see that where the turret is, the turret obviously sits right in here. So that just slots in there and then it does its thing. Now, all these pieces right here, those are 1x2x2 by two by two panel parts. And minifigures actually slot into those parts quite nicely. So I can fit a total of three on each side, so that's six dismounts in total. And if you're wondering how the wheels are mounted to the vehicle, these Technic pieces right in here and right down there. I don't know what they're called. They're like uh, half wide beams or something. You can mount Technic pins to the other side of them. And then you can mount your, uh, your suspension system. I didn't have enough parts. That's why those are in yellow. But yeah, it's pretty much this whole design carried throughout the vehicle. And in terms of the uh, the drop ramp in the back, these are the pieces I'm using for it. And it's really, it's pretty much just a combination of a bit of technique and then a bit of system. Um, you know, just get clever with the parts, see what you can do with them. And sometimes you'll run into cases like this where it's, you know, it's like, like the money shot. You know, it's... It's a really cool occurrence where you go, oh, hey, this actually works, you know, and then you roll with it, and then everything turns out quite nicely. But yeah, that is the interior of this vehicle. So, uh, one of the things, actually going back to it, one of the things about this vehicle. Now, for the security of the parts, what I could have done is turn these on there, I guess, at this point, you know, rotate them like, 
what, 90 degrees? Yeah, I could, I could have rotated them 90 degrees so that the studs, instead of facing the sides, they face outward. The reason I didn't do that, and this is the case on a lot of my models, I like having at least a stud of space between the legs of the figures. So the, if minifigures are seated facing each other, I like having a stud of space between the legs. Because, I don't know, it's, I know you can't really get too realistic when building with Lego, because, you know, scaling and whatnot, but it's just that little bit of detail that I sort of like, that little bit of realism, because, I don't know, you know, you got to be able to move, right? <laughs> walking back and forth between the vehicle or walking in and out of it. But that's just my little, little bit on that and why the, uh, these panels are situated that way. I guess I could, I don't know, tape them on the bottom for stability, but as long as I'm not pressing in there too, uh, too hard, it's fine as it is, I'd say. So yeah, let's just button this back up. Bada bing, and bada boom. And then we'll throw the turret on. And apparently throw the minifigure out. So. Anyhow, everyone, that is my CVM-3 infantry fighting vehicle. Tracked infantry fighting vehicle. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, maybe uh, check out my other videos, subscribe to the channel, like the video, yada yada yada. So anyway, I will catch you in the next one. Bye.